Hi everybody, I'm Lynn Burkhead of MajorLeagueFishing.com with our record man himself, Mr. Aaron Martin. So last fall in Minnesota, as uh, you you just obliterated Kevin yeah. Mayhem's uh, single day yeah, record in Major League Fishing. That, and, uh, that was <laughs> a that was a lot of fun, I know for you. But I gotta I gotta ask you questions. What I want to focus on here. What was more fun for you? Was it the fact that you did what you did, catching all of those fish? What was it, 88 pounds and change, mm -hmm. and, and you set the record? Or was it that you obliterated Kevin Van Dam's previous record? You guys have some rivalries yeah, within the bit, sport. A little bit. Was it more satisfying to get the record, or was it more satisfying who you took it away from? Uh, it's, I guess it's more for who I took it away from. I like Kevin a lot. I love Kevin. He's a good, good guy. He's, He's a good uh, straight shooter, but yeah, it, it was good getting the record, but it, it made it definitely extra sweet that was from Kevin. <laughs> well, and, and for folks that might not understand the history of bass fishing, Kevin is, uh, uh, he's kept a few of you guys from uh, having some very lucrative uh, classics, or, or classics and, uh -huh. and, and a lot of trophies in your trophy case. I know, I know uh, Jeff Creek told me one time, and, and at first I thought he was joking, then I realized he really wasn't. Uh, he'd have a pretty good career if it hadn't been for Kevin Van Dam. Because yeah. Kevin would... Mine would have been better, too. You... So I, I, I got two classics behind him, seconds, and one was by like four or five ounces. So anytime I can beat Kevin Van Dam, he knows it. So it makes it extra sweet. It makes Same, it extra... It's actually the other way around for him, though. He loves beating everybody, especially I think he likes beating me, too, though. Let's talk about the rivalry aspect. You guys are kind of like a fraternity in college yeah. in a lot of ways. Because you yeah. travel around, you, you a lot of you stay in campers. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you see each other 10, 12, see 15 weeks out of the year. So yeah. you're in close proximity and you've got sort of personalities and you've yeah. got competition and there's, it's, it's neat. I, I, I really enjoy it. I really, now that I'm older now and, and got to know a lot of the guys and a lot of new guys come into this sport. Uh, it's a shame that we don't get to hang out more. Mm -hmm. Like you think when you first meet each other, you know, especially six or eight, 10 years ago, it's like, oh man, we, Let's go fishing. Let's do stuff, and that never happens. Right. It never happens for any of us. Too busy. Uh, so the only chance we really do get to see each other a lot is at the meetings and 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 the MLFs and and I mean even the eating out and stuff. It doesn't happen very often. We, most of us have so much to do, and there's so much to do all the time that just don't have time to hang. But we're all good buddies, and 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 uh, you know I talk to a few of the guys on the phone here and there when we're driving and stuff. We, we talk a lot. I talked to Kelly a lot coming up here, you know, with Todd, and it, it, it's just it's just kind of a shame we're too busy to hang out. There's a lot of really neat guys on tour. And is there a mental list in Aaron Martin's mind of, you know, I like to beat everybody, but I really like to beat these three or four guys? No, uh, I, I don't know. It's I like. I, I mean, I get along with almost everybody out there. Um, and you and, you know, do. I, have, I have more respect for some of the guys. Like, there's some guys that I might step on to get, and, you know, and a lot of times I've. And it's, they're on a spot that you want to fish, and, and a lot of times if it's somebody that I really have a lot of respect for that's respected me in the past, I'll pass them on, keep going. Uh, but there are some guys that have stepped on me a lot in the past that just don't care, and you know, you start catching them, they come right in. Um, those guys I don't, I don't really have a lot of respect for. Uh, I, may, I may respect them in, in a professional way, but when it comes to catching fish and they're on a spot that I want to fish and I know about it, and they're fishing there, and they didn't show me respect two or three, four times over the years, uh, I think a lot of us are like that. Um, there is still a lot of respect out there, uh, but it is changing with the new, the technology now, and it seems like everybody knows all the good spots, a lot of places mm -hmm. we go, so it is changing. The kind of old school mentality uh, is fading away. It's changing, sport's changing a lot. You're known on the tour, you're known here at Major League Fishing as one of the more cerebral guys out there. You do, you're a deep thinker in many, many ways. It um, doesn't always work best for me, but yeah. I do think a lot. And the when you say the day that you set the record and you you uh, you were out there on the water, were you were you zoned in on the moment, or you, were you thinking about why this is happening and how you can do it elsewhere? And yeah, uh, it was a, a really fortunate moment. <laughs> I mean, I found that first school. You saw, everybody knows that it was crazy at large mouth school. But then at that large, that small mouth school, even though I was I was leaving that area and I saw them on the graph at 20 miles an hour, and I just like shut down. Those look like bass. And then fur got bit right away. I was just hoping it would keep going, like it wouldn't stop. Like that large mouth school kind of just quit on me. Um, 
But in a situation like that, I was looking around the whole time. If things did go south and I couldn't get a bite anymore, I, I had many other ideas, but fortunate for me and unfortunate for everybody else, they just kept on biting. <laughs> It was unfortunate for everybody else, and obviously Minnesota was a place where something very special could happen and did for you. We're actually in East Texas, in Nacogdoches, Texas, in, in some ways almost like the Augusta National of, of fishing. You've got Toledo Bend not too far away, you got Sam Raver not too far away, and you got a lot of other little lakes that are really, really good with big fish in them. This is some pretty, uh, pretty good territory for a bass fisherman. Is your record in jeopardy this week? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, I'd say it'd be in jeopardy anywhere you go in March, but yeah, Texas is one of those ones where definitely. But yeah, anywhere at any time in March, you're, you're I mean, it, sh it, should, it should be broke, which is sad, but I'm, like I said, I hope I break it. But. Bunch of good guys, but they do like to beat each oh, other. Oh yeah. They are competitors <laughs> from the word go. Yeah. including Mr. Aaron Martins, our current record holder in Major League Fishing. For more about our anglers and more about our sport, go to our website, MajorLeagueFishing.com.